lives in a monochrome world Broken from the sight through her lonely eyes It reflects the ocean and stars But her cry echoes around The simple loss of love in her heart Making this whole fairy tale alive And sorrows tender embrace This was never meant to happen Day. The only reason you have to stay Hear me sing my song And just keep holding on Hi everybody and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon I am wearing my glasses And it feels so weird It's like I noticed them <laughs> But my eyes were like super blurry So I gotta deal with it Anyway I think this is gonna be the last episode I'm gonna hope We're on the last chapter so this should be the last episode. Turn it up a little. There we go. Continue. Let's not overwrite our save this time. Oh my god, it changed his name to Chevalier when I load now. What kind of horrifying reality have I wandered into? Son of a bitch. The marching was quiet when we returned. Everyone had already disappeared into their rooms, and so I went straight to mine. Ugh, it's like my glasses are, like, fighting against my headphones. I forced Chevalier to go back to his. He has he has been on his feet all day and needs the rest. There we go. Did I seriously just say his name? Oh my gosh, I'm falling into the trap. I plopped down onto my bed as soon as we returned home. I glanced briefly to the side where Chevalier's bouquet is... Why? You've called him Rumple for as long as you've known him. Why would you suddenly switch to a different name? I mean, I guess that's what the person would want, but you've called them this for so long. <laughs> like, if I called you Timmy for like a year, I couldn't suddenly call you Bill. I mean, you've been Timmy all my life. I'm go I'm, I'm dipping into a territory that I just don't want to go to. I glanced briefly to the side where Chevalier's bouquet is in the vase Parfait had given to me. Who is it? Parfait. Come in. You're a delicious, delicious, <laughs> you're a delicious fairy. Par parfait isn't. It's like a. It's like a dessert. You're a delicious dessert. You've returned. Parfait looks paler than normal. I realize with a start that Chevalier did not tend her all to at all today. <laughs> Stop saying that name. Don't look at me like that. I'm fine. My glasses are tickling my nose. <laughs> I might have to take them off. How are the soldiers at the clinic? Not good. Many of them have been gravely wounded. Some say they... Oh, everything is so blurry when I take my glasses off. I gotta, I gotta deal with it. <laughs> I gotta deal with it. Like, I just try to take them off and then I can't see shit. Suddenly I'm blind. Some said they remembered magic. Others say that they do not remember anything at all. A shadow falls over Parfait's expression as she sighs. The fuck is that? It's a hair. Okay. <laughs> so the circumstances are dire than we th are, yeah, are dire than we thought. It's a good thing she- Rumpel is there to lend a helping hand. Did you all manage to come up with a plan? It's proving more difficult than we anticipated. Go in there, swords blazing! You know, it said guns blazing, but they don't have guns. <laughs> the faces I make to make some of the noises I make is just ridiculous. Dolores and I are willing to put ourselves in danger. Waltz is too, because he can use magic to a certain extent. You can. The knights in Karma have their blades. But, but Chevy. I do not want to involve him in this. Nose is tickling. <laughs> Can we ask Rumpel how he wears glasses? Because it's like, it, it, my nose, it feels like it's tickling. It feels like little, little feet are dancing on the bridge of my nose. Because you're worried about him. Yes, because I love him. Of course I am. You've grown, princess. Really? My height seems to be the same. You reminded me of a younger Hillary. <laughs> Please, somebody tell me how to pronounce that name. <laughs> Hilder, Hil, Hildery, Hil, Hilder. <laughs> somebody in the comments, I beg you. <laughs> then when I post this, all the comments are just, this is how I pronounce this name, and it's like 10 different pronunciations. I die. Back then, Hillary was both calm and resilient. One moment she could be smiling ear to ear, and the next she could be strict and unmovable as the coldest dice. The two of us were like sisters. We did so much together. We learned together, explored the kingdom together. I can say with all certainty that we were both that we were the best friends. 
and then the fairy tale hap the fairy tales happened. God. When Hillary killed the first human, she was corrupted. Her darkness swallowed her whole. I don't remember a time before mother was corrupted, and so I cannot imagine the one Parfait describes. I knew the old Hillary would have wanted to show you the beauty in the things. In the things. I'm sorry, my gla my glasses are distracting me. I can see the rims of them. <laughs> All episode, you're just gonna be like, just take your fucking glasses off. They're annoying you that much. But people who wear them, they'll understand. I can't see anything. My eyes today, they are just not working. <laughs> she, uh, she, princess, she would not want you to suffer. Well, she did it. I'm sorry you became so embroiled in things. It was inevitable, I guess. If Dolor hadn't cursed me, then I would still be in the palace, and I would have just been as helpless as everyone else. So while I'm out here, I have the responsibility to help everyone. Mm, I saw something. I touched the incomplete glass slipper at my neck. I still haven't even done three good deeds. God, this is hard. Duh. No, stop telling me to update my goddamn thing. Remind me in three days, then I'll yell at you then. Don't look so sad. You come up with your good three good deeds and things will go back to normal. And of course, you still have friends here when you return. And come your 18th birthday, Delora and I will teach you about magic. Well, it's a secret to help, too. But for now, our top priority is a plan. Rest easy, princess. Things will work out. It's hard to believe that this problem could be so easily solved, but I will try to believe. I believe. When Parfait leaves, I'm left to my own thoughts. You really need a TV in here. <laughs> I hope everyone at the palace is okay and that they can hold on until we come up with our plan, but I feel like we're already running out of time. <laughs> ah, congestion. Days go by and I find myself assisting shivy at times. Some other times I remain at the march and to help... Concept. Fuck it. <laughs> I may be wearing glasses, but they don't knock me, not make me any smarter. Goodbye. To come up with a plan is what I'll say. Because fuck it, I'm not literate. None of our plans have actually shown any promise yet. But with all of our, all of the, the all of our minds put together, we should be able to come up with something. A week later. A week later. Guys, when this happened, like. In Roger, we were like, let's go! Let's fucking go! Now we're like, meh, we'll be fine. I'm not in love with anyone there. A week later, I find myself standing outside the clinic door waiting for... That guy. Sorry to have kept you waiting, princess. How do you wear these? How do you do it? <laughs> Doesn't it tickle your nose? Eventually, that part of your nose just becomes like... It, it, it has no feeling. That part of your nose, you could fucking put a bullet through that part of your nose and wouldn't feel anything. <laughs> You can drop the title, you know. What's hitting my knee? Okay. Sex tobe. But you are my princess. You are a princess in my eyes. <sighs> yes, but you do not need to address me by my title. Just my name is fantastic. Chevy reaches out to take my hand, then immediately pulls his hand back, eyes wide. <laughs> I forgot. What? The medicine that I need to prefer for, for parfait. Is in this race she gonna die? <laughs> and by the way, do you see that person in the window? <laughs> Does that look like a person? <laughs> oh my god, that's actually kind of, they're very small. <laughs> that's very creepy. Ooh. Okay. Gimme a moment, prison sex to Chevy plants a quick kiss on my forehead. Thank you before running inside. Still underage, still underage, still underage. I stare at- I stare at the st stars as I wait. I stare at the stairs, stare at the stairs, stare at the- uh. I turn but see no one walking around the plaza. I inch closer toward the door of the clinic as I take another look around. Boo. Uh. Uh. Wait, uh, wait. Boo. Alright. I suddenly see the silhouette of a man. He takes a few more steps towards me and then stops in front of me. <gasps> I recognize him immediately. He appeared left- his appearance left quite an impression on me last time. Out at night by yourself, certainly you know that wolves prowl these streets at night. You mean stray dogs? What do you want? I take a step back and press myself to the door. I reach for the door handle, but the man reaches out a hand to grab my wrist, holding it to the door. 
Hmm, I'd say my answer to that question is complicated, Princess. Gasp. By the expression on your face, I must have hit the nail right on the head. Eh. <laughs> you are the princess. How do you know who I am? That is part of the mystery, isn't it? I attempt to wrestle my wrist out of his fingers. Mm. Scream for help! <laughs> In a hostage situation! <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Scream for help! I refuse to go anywhere with this gross guy. That might be Fritz. I I don't I don't know yet. I open my mouth to scream, but before I can even breathe, breathe the man's hand flies to my mouth. Well, that was fucking useless. You're a disobedient one, aren't you? I struggle against his grasp. It does not take long for the grin to fall from his face, as it is replaced with a look that lacks any amusement. Sorry, my tablet is hitting my knee and it's so fucking annoying. I enjoy seeing you struggle, but I'm afraid that we have been out here for too long. I spit on my computer. Didn't mean to do that, just trying to get the spit off my computer. <laughs> Alright. I bang my shoulder against the door, then a resounding creak falls my attempt. Blech. No more Mr. Nice Guy. The man opens a small vial right in front of my face. Something sweet wafts in the air. Wafts, wafts. <laughs> Wafts in the air, and I suddenly feel myself falling into a darkness as I collapse. Goodbye. Be sleepy time. Mm, I don't trust Lisa at all. Where the heck am I? I glance around me. My room. I look around cautiously, checking to see if anything in my room is different. Well, Dolores not there, but meh. last time I was here before I, the last time I was here was before I was cursed. How is it that this is the same room? <laughs> Sleeping Beauty has awoken. Now that, that's just you. Can you imagine if there was, like, in this route, somebody. <laughs> the Sleeping Beauty curse, the guy's just sleeping the entire time. That's the route, he's just sleeping, and somehow you have to break his curse for him. You just sit there, staring at him. The choices are do you stare more? Do you stare more? Just ten. Just ten chapters of staring. And then. The ninth chapter. Do you kiss him? Sure. I moved to stand up before realizing that my legs are all numb. Shame to see you so easily tamed, princess. And here I thought you would be fun. Stop clicking your water bottle. Save some for the fishes. I glance up to look at the man who is now standing right up, right at my bees, <laughs> right at my bee side, right at my bedside. How do you know who I am? Are you a witch? A witch? Me? No. Ha! He bursts into laughter. I would rip the witches to shreds if I could. Ha! <laughs> Plot twist. He's a wizard. If he could, then are you cursed? The man simply smirks at me but says nothing in response. He brushes the words aside with a gesture of his hand. Are you working for Mythros? Probably. <laughs> I glare at his vague answer. My name is Vlach, and I've been assigned to your as to, to be your personal knight. It is Fritz. I already have a personal knight. God knows where he is. Oh, you mean Fritz? I got rid of him a while ago. <laughs> you. No playing with the queen's daughter, Varg. Oh, oh, you. Oh, sorry, wrong voice. My thrust enters the room. Yeah, like I've been paying attention to voices this entire time. No. Now he stands in the doorway, eyeing the both of us with a smile that is so oddly reminiscent of his usual one that it makes me sick. My throes. Princess, you look more and more like your mother every day. Why, the scowl on your face is almost perfect reflection. And a fuck you too! Why is it now my ferret decides to throw a fucking fit? He moves to stand in front of me. All at the same time, Varg begins to take a slow and careful footsteps to the edge of my room. I am hungry. <laughs> what have you done with everyone? Inconsequential or consequential? Uh, what? What? My thoughts clicks his tongue impatiently. Inconsequential, consequential people, please don't make me say those words again. I narrow my eyes at him. I have... <laughs> I have no idea who he defines as inconsequential and consequential. If I say those two words one more time, I'm gonna kill myself. 
Where are the king and the rest of his family? Where's Fritz? Were, were you the one who killed Sir Alcaster? If so, sir, I have to thank you. Ugh! Uh, inconsequential and consequential then to start. Your knight is gone, princess. I replaced him with Varg here. Please, no again. Don't make me say those words again. I choke on them every time. An Alcaster. Well, we had the common cause at first. Had a common cause. We both wanted the crown. Your nose looks weird. Sir Alcaster was also betraying the king. Well, yeah, no drama. But Alcaster was a brute. He wanted to needlessly kill the royal family and steal the crown for himself. At first, I thought he was calm and calculating. But it turns out that he was that he that he was just a power-hungry fool. Though I did not though though I did want to take the crown, I want to avoid the bloodshed of certain. Screw those guards, they're not important. My thrust smiles at me. It is a look that makes my blood run a cold. So I dispose of him the rest of the nights, but oh, don't worry, princess. I assure you that your family is resting in their rooms, just like you are resting in yours. What does that mean? What? Don't worry, you'll see them shortly for dinner. Boy, we ain't playing house here! I have my doubts at Mythros' story, uh, about Mythros' story, but if it's what he said was true, then Sir Alcaster wanted to kill the royal family, and Mythros saved them! So, sir, I must thank you again. But then he decimated the knights and took the royal family hostage? Why would he do such a thing? Fucking ferret! Play with your damn food dish! They're prisoners, then. Prisoners in their own home? Nonsense. We're all just awaiting the queen's return to I'm sorry, what? The queen. Slowly I feel pieces beginning to fit together. I don't, I am very confused. The queen, you cannot be talking about Ophelia. Is she gone? Hello? What? Do you think witches are capable of bringing back the dead? Is Ophelia dead? <laughs> what did Ophelia die? Hello, what? Ophelia's not dead, is she? I'm con hold on, scroll back, I'm confused. We're all just awaiting the queen's return together. Okay, I I totally processed that wrong. He's not- she's like, okay, she's not talking- he's not talking about Ophelia, then who? Alright, I got it, I'm sorry, I got very confused. I was like, the fuck? Is Ophelia dead? No. Her mother, dumbass. Mother is dead though, haha! -ha. Is she really? Hey, hey you, shut up. You can bring mother back from the dead? Gross. We can, princess. No, please don't. I can't. It's been a while since we had a mom flashback, I gotta say. We? The queen has been resting for a long time, waiting for you to gain your power so that you can help her escape her prison. How about no? How about no? Yo, bro, you ain't making any sense. I struggle to keep my words from faltering. How is Mother alive? She's not! And what does he mean by prison? It's not! The Tenaburum is Queen's- is, is the Queen's prison. It is linked to the Queen's power. So, Though whether presume she was dead, the Queen is sealed. The Queen sealed the last of her powers inside the- Oh my god! She lives on. All she requires is your power, princess. Ehebet no. My no. When you become the next bearer, you will have the ability to release the queen from her prison. Or I can have the ability to make a very big cake with tacos. I like the second one. My birthday is in a week. Shit. I'm gonna be legal then. <laughs> that is when I meant to take the responsibility of becoming a bearer, though Parfait and Dolores never went into more detail beyond that. You'll finally get to see your mother again, princess. I don't wanna. I still cannot quite take everything in. That he has just said, however, if my thoughts had approached me before the curse, I would have helped Mother in a heartbeat. But now I'm really thinking about it. But it was Mother who was the last in Brown Bear and the one who brought the darkness to Angie. I got an itch. I once believed that Mother was the only person who ever to ever love me. Now I know that I was wrong. That she shut me in from the world that I should have known. But still, even I wish she was here. Your mother's a total bitch. What are you talking about? Damn, girl! I take a deep breath. 
but I cannot afford to be shellfish. Shell, shell, selfish. Sandy sells selfish pound by the seashore. So, she sells so. I. Somebody stop me. <laughs> I cannot put anyone else in danger. I will not help you. Screw you. Psh. Oh, you don't have a choice. I, I wasn't asking, I was demanding. I have set the stage for my queen's return. All that's left is to free her from her cage. We will speak more of this at the dining table. Stop, I'm hungry. My Doritos are gone. My thrust leaves the room, leaving me briefly with, briefly with Varg. Hey, how you doing? Varg smiles at me beneath his mask, then brings my, his index finger to the temple of his head and loops it. He mouths the word crazy. Oh my god. You said you would tear witches apart, so why do you serve my thrust? Oh. Hey, my friend's playing a game. A good question. You are not going to answer me, are you? How perceptive of you, princess. Just get out! You're useless! He smirks at me before following my thrust out the door. Yeah. I am once again left by myself in the room. Everything my thrust just told me swirls through my mind. My mother. Alive. And he killed everyone only to take the crown and keep it for her. Yeah, well, it all makes sense, I guess. A shudder runs through my body. She cannot return. Oh, fuck no. I spend the next hour looking around my room for things that might aid my escape. I know where everyone else's rooms are, too, but I have no idea how heavily guarded they are, and I doubt I could help them. I must return to the march in. Do you see a, a, a clear exit? Use your mirror. I don't know. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Get me the fuck out of here. I test the window, but it's locked, probably with magic. I share to myself. Share, share to my. Oh god, here we go again. The dolls that used to come from me can do nothing for me now. Last, I check my drawers, but there are many. There are many things in them. There is nothing that looks like it could help me escape. As I am searching, I come across a book, a box, a book box, and pause to pick it up. Hello. What are you? I remember this. It was given to my. Oh, my ferrets are causing such a racket. I am so sorry. Oh, they're so loud. <laughs> Remember this. It was given my, to, to me by my mother with strict instructions not to open it and always keep it, keep the key hidden. Wow, wouldn't now be a great time. I search the drawer again for the key. The moment I begin to set the box down, I see a small golden key at the bottom of the drawer. I pick it up and I'm about to open the box when I stop. This is hardly a priority right now. I set the key down at- Girl! I should be searching for a way to escape. But you don't know what's in it. That's a good time to find out. I turn to see Varg's smiling face at the door. <laughs> that is so creepy. I can imagine his dark, halfly lit up face just smiling. That smile dog smile in the crack of the door just looking at her like, Hi! You look like a criminal who's just been caught doing something naughty. Says the criminal himself. Maybe we're meant for each other. And do me a favor and get the fuck out. I narrow my eyes as he approaches. Behind his back, I can make out the open door. <laughs> don't even think about it. <laughs> you don't want me to pounce you in the hallways, do you? Depends what you're gonna do. <laughs> Depends what you're gonna do now. Oh, bye bye hand. <laughs> Just wondering where that other hand was going. That would be unpleasant. Var grabs my wrist. I attempt to struggle free, but he holds tight to me. How will be your escort to dinner tonight? I don't want to. I'm not hungry. I keep my head held high as Varg escorts me from my room. Ah, the old hallways. On the way to the dining table, the hall, I glimpse, I glimpse the rest, of the, I glimpse the rest of the palace. It's mostly empty, save for a few soldiers. The soldiers that do stand there have a glazed look in their eyes and look right through me. Eh, puppets. <laughs> A spell cast by Mithras? Far does not answer me as he pulls me through the hallway. Mmm, <clears throat> water. That's good stuff. I actually need more. <clears throat> I gotta lubricate that throat, am I right? <laughs> Soon I find myself in the dining hall. The guards usually standing by the walls are gone. Now there's only the royal family. They seem to be unharmed. I'm spooked! <laughs> I can see a recognition in, his, in the king's eyes. My heart flutters as he stands and tries to. He manages to rise, but only just barely. I notice that his feet stay firmly planted where they are. Everyone's bodies look exponentially stiff. Is this some kind of spell? 
You are the girl that was outside my palace months ago. The fuck you do- Mythros, what is the meaning of this? I notice that the king is not at the head of the table as usual. Everyone sits on the table's sides except for Mythros, who is at the far end. The king's seat, however, is clear. I simply brought back the crowned princess. You should be thanking me, Gennaro. I have reunited you with your daughter. Who? Nope. The king raises an eyebrow, clearly skeptical. I can see in his eyes that he is, that he, that he is loath to trust anything Mythros has to say. The king slumps in his chair as Varg leads me to the seat just beside Rod. Hey, Rod, how you doing? Good old days, right? Yeah. I noticed Emmy sitting just to Rod's side. She forces a smile onto her face, but I can see the tears gathering in her eyes. It's gonna be okay, girl. Allow me to offer a more formal introduction for our guest, even though you all know her. Her name is Sexto Riella Brithun, and she is the crown princess of Angiel. Idiots. And your blood daughter, Gennaro. Idiot. The king looks at me again. This time, there is more uncertainty in his gaze. Yeah. Prince Rod will tell you, won't he? Shut up, Rod. Shh. Actually, I don't. I don't. I guess it's not that really big of a secret. Yeah, go ahead. Open your big fat mouth. Wait, you can't. <laughs> All right, shouldn't you be dead? <laughs> I am so horrible. Rod looks at me, his gaze quiet but expectant. You're a mute. Throw that bunny across the room if you have to. I turn to the king and the rest of my step family. It's nice to meet you all. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> it's nice to meet you guys. How you doing? There's no point in trying to convince the king of my birth right here and now. It would only confuse him more, and now is not the time or place. I glance at Mythros, who's smiling at me expectantly. Besides, Mythros, besides, Mythros must have a reason for assisting on my birth right here and now. Right now. Most likely, it just means to confuse the king more. And if that's the case, I will not play into such petty scheme. My name is Sexto. Thank you for your kindness that one time. <laughs> Shh, Rod, it's a secret. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's gonna be okay. I can't look at Rod seriously anymore. I'm sorry, I can't. <clears throat> Lightning Rod looks shocked. I scowl at him before turning to look at Mythros. Mythros' smile is twisted into a frown. I feel proud in seeing him caught off guard. Sexto, what are you doing here? Reason? Gennaro, she is undoubtedly your daughter. That is why she is in the room that you have been taking care of. Oh. I was like, what room? This room? What? The king's eyes widen. He looks at a loss for words. Yep, those are some wide eyes right there. Mm. Princess, the king has been keeping your room clean and tidy for the sake of nostalgia. And he has no idea why. Magic works in interesting ways, doesn't it? I was wondering why my room was unchanged, but could it be that the king remembers me somehow? I look up at him, but he has already glanced away from me. His expression is complicated is a complicated twist of confusion and helplessness. Oh, somebody give this boy a hug. It seems that even the king does not fully understand. I turn to Mythros. It can work in both good and bad ways. Ah yes, the Fairy Tale Curse is terrible, isn't it? I catch Varg's eyes from the side of the room. <clears throat> he glances away from me, and I follow his gaze to the corners of the room. I had noticed him before, but now I see a cloaked figure hidden in the shadows, hiding in the shadows. Fucking witches. They must be the ones holding everyone in the pla in place if they try to escape. I need a drink. <clears throat> that feels better. But not all magic is terrible, like the magic we will use to revive the queen. You're insane! Hillary is a mad woman! You have no right to refer her by name. Oh. A sudden chill envelops the room. I can feel actual icicles on the table. I pull my hands away. Just icicles. Now, we're going to eat dinner and we're going to freaking enjoy it like a happy family we are! Damn it! Every Christmas y'all pull this shit! And every day will be just like this until the Queen's return. Rod glares across the table at Mythros. But why? Why would we not enjoy dinner together? Because we don't like you. That's not what I meant. Why go through all this charade day after day? I stare across the table at Mythros, glaring. I already told you before I had to clear this place for traitors. 
Outcaster planned on stealing the crown, and I stole it back! Like a boss! But because of the time of the Queen's revival is so close, I have decided to keep the crown with me until I can return it to its appropriate owner. <clears throat> Hillary is... This, this. Queen Hillary is a true owner of the crown. I thought it's best that we all wait out her arrival together like a happy family! Damn it. But know this, when my queen demands it, I will kill all of you. I simply refuse to act without her orders. This time guards come into the room with food. They set it before us and we are forced to eat beneath my thrust's watchful gaze. Though I try to spot an opening in the dining hall, I can find no way out. Damn, this really is prison. A really fancy prison! Two days pass and I have been searching for ways out and trying to ease more answers out of Varg and Mythros. Neither of them are very forthcoming. Both enjoy speaking in riddles. Varg especially is an enigma. Enigma. Whenever I try to ask him about Fritz, he smirks at me and remains silent because he is Fritz, but he's like not Fritz, but he's Fritz, but he's also not Fritz, you know? You get it? Okay. <clears throat> what, not going to try to ask me any questions tonight? Yeah, I give up. I'm not going to get any answers from Varg, and it is almost my birthday. I need to find a way out of here. I'm disappointed. You're the only fun I've had in here, princess. Go play with yourself if you want some fun. That came out really quickly. Wow, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Maybe if I'm quiet, he will leave me alone. If you're just going to be quiet and sulk, I guess I should be going. Remember, don't try anything funny. There are nights just outside your door. Yeah, gonna bow. Varg bows mockingly. He leans down to pat me on the head. Ew, don't touch me. Before he turns and leaves. <clears throat> I cannot give up. I once again begin my search through the room. Time is running out and there is nothing I, that I can do besides search for a way out. But I know that if I leave the room, the knights will catch me immediately. If I had a weapon, I might stand a... <laughs> bitch, please! Put my fingers to my neck and remember what Chevy told me about it. Sleep. Delora? 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 I'm like, okay, that was kind of creepy, but I have a feeling if it was coming up from outside the door, it must be my baby. The sound- it must be mom. The sound comes from outside my door. Mom, as in Delora, because Delora is my new mommy. It's a woman's voice. The door opens suddenly. Chevy and Delora are both in my room. Hi, guys! Delora looks so happy. He's like, yeah, I did that. I'm startled to see Chevy standing before me. His- I Chevy. His eyebrows drawn over his eyes with great worry, and beside him stands Delora with her arms crossed, all happy-like. Well, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? We're here to stage a daring rescue! Alright, let's do it! I rush to... Rumple. It's Rumple, and it will always be fucking Rumple. It's not Chevy, it's not Chris, it's not Bill, it's not George, it's fucking Rumple. Y'all- y'all good? <laughs> I wrap my arms around him. He puts a hand on the small of my back and smiles down at me. She's almost 18. You can do it later. I'm going to get you out of here. God, I hope so. I didn't think you were just going to come here to hang out and then leave. How'd you heck you both get in here? With the power of magic! Whee! Dramatic, even at a time like this. The two exchange a look before looking at me seriously. <clears throat> Parfait Waltz and the Knights. The Knights and Karma are all here. We thought we'd just be fighting witches, though. We weren't expecting the knights. No matter what we said, we couldn't get through them. They're under a spell. My thrust. <laughs> she looks like, God damn it. <laughs> she looks so done. He wants to release Mother. Both of them look at me with confusion. What? Mother's still alive, just inside the Tenebrum. Nah, Tenebrum. She's inside the crystal. My thrust wants to bring her back. That's impossible. Queen is still alive. Rumple looks worried while Dolores' expression is more rigid and resolute. We cannot let that happen. I don't know how the Queen would be alive in the first place, but... Well, we'll worry about that later. Alright, we have time later to discuss the specifics of everything, but right now we need to get out of here. Alright, everyone is keeping the guards and the witches busy for you, Princess. I'll distract Mythros. Rumple and... Rump... Blech! Blech! Rumpel, I'm counting on you to get the princess to safety. That's why I'm here, princess. Princess, you, can you guide me through the palace? Oh my 
God. Gee, I cannot leave everyone here. Don't worry. Garland is saying he's saving your family. No, I cannot just leave everyone in the margin here to do things for me. Sexto, we cannot afford to lose you. If we lost Sexto, then what happens to the crystal? Oh, wait, no. Parfait is handling the crystal. Never mind. Then she'd keep handling it and then fucking die. But then what? I told you I would do anything to protect you, and I will. The sooner you're safe, the sooner we'll have the advantage. You are the legitimate heir to the throne. Almost, I thought that's a throne. I was like, the fuck is a throne? In the next town of Burren Bear, you cannot let yourself remain in Mithras's hand. The situation is indeed most dire, so for now, we must hurry. I need to adjust my booty. Oh, just booty. Booty adjusted. I nod my head feebly. Without another word, the three of us head out towards the door. Dolora exits first and stops immediately. I almost run into her. I glance through the doorway and see Varg waiting just outside, holding a blade across Dolores' neck. No, 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 don't you touch my darling. Whee. Dolora holds up her hand, deflects the sword, and it slides harmlessly past her neck. Varg slides away, still holding out his sword. His usual smirk is half-hearted at best. Get the fuck out of our way! You're awfully demanding, aren't you? <laughs> Pretty please. Aw, oh, Dolora, you're cute. Oh, can do, my lady. Oh, that's a shame. Looks like I'll just have to destroy that pretty mask of yours along with everything else underneath. Dolor holds up her hand and summons a wall of electric orbs. Woo! Woo! Pikachu, use Thunderbolt. With a flick of her wrist, she sends them rushing towards Varg, who dodges them surprise and with, with, with surprising speed. Varg's movements appear sluggish, but I have seen his... But I have seen his fast reflexes. He's playing with Dolore, even though I do not think he has the advantage. What was that? He drops a sword. Oh. For a few moments, I feel Dolora has the advantage, and suddenly he raises the cane he usually holds at his side and taps it on the ground. A burst of smoke escapes the bottom of it, shouting, shrouding the room. An enchanted cane? What bullshit is this? You're not the only one with tricks up your sleeve. Ah, uh, Dolora, no! Rumple, get the heck- get, get- leave! Get her out of here! Take her home! Put her on a leash! Let's go! Rumple takes my hand in his and begins to lead the lead me away. I turn to glance back at Dolora and Varg and realize that while Dolora is completely on the offensive, Varg does not does nothing but dodge. It's as if he's trying to buy time for something. I banish the thought from my head as Rumple pulls me down the hall. I don't want Dolora to die. How you doing, Karma? You're a pretty, pretty lady. How rude! Haven't you heard of Shiverly? Shiv, 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 shiv him! I spot Karma still in his dress, holding <laughs> a lady can fight, holding a sword out and the man in front of him. When a man lunges, Karma dodges back and grunts as his back comes to the wall. I suppose Shiverly is dead then. What a shame. He steps off to the side as as the possessed knight attacks him with his blade. The sword catches his dress but does nothing to hinder him from stepping forward and aiming and a jab with his sword beneath the knight's armor. Oh! The knight kneels but the sword does not fall from his hand. Karma looks up at us sharply. What are you doing just standing there? Get the fuck out! Oh, okay, <laughs> we were just watching the pretty pretty sword play. It takes me a moment to realize that it was that I was just frozen, so it so 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 was Rumpel. His face is pale as he grabs my hand again and once again starts rushing me down the other end of the hall. Once in a while I do that middle finger push the glasses up thing. Rumple's steps are, steps are wider than mine, and I have to struggle to keep up. But the further we go down the hallway, the more apparent it's become that we are there are too many obstacles in the way. We pass Julianne and Garland as we move to, and they manage to clear the path for us. Those knights. They will not stop moving until Mythros is defeated. I hope the king and everyone else is safe. As we pass Julianne and Garland, I tell them where the royal family is, but I have no way of knowing if the words reach their ears amidst all the sound. Rumple. So the stab wounds in the armor that I saw earlier were from the knights themselves, but why would they battle each other? What? The punctures in the armor that we saw at the clinic, the stab wounds in the gut and at the arms. Rumpel's eyes are so distant it's as if he's looking right through me. They were... They were what? We need to keep moving. No! I take his hand and lead him forward. I do not know what he's talking about, but we can talk about this later. Right now we have to escape. We are closer to the palace entrance when we see them. 
A group of knights standing in two lines on both sides of the hall facing each other. At the far end of the hallway stands a gaggle of witches and between them Mithras. Good evening. Did you enjoy your stroll around the palace? Rebel immediately moves to stand in front of me. The cloudiness is gone from his eyes. But what leaves his mouth is not demand but a question. How could you do this? How oh, it was quite easy actually. Here, here's my first step. You might want to take notes. You know what I mean. Why would you make the knights fight one another? Because it's funny. Oh, what a foolish question. Obviously it's because they are inconsequential. Not again! Not these words again! On a stage, some pawns exist as easily as replaceable as extras. I am interested in keeping only the actors. In the grand scheme of things, the extras aren't needed. In fact, I can make them do whatever I need in order to get the best outcome. He snaps his fingers and the knights raise their swords. I tense, thinking that the knights are going to turn to us, but they never do. Here is an interlude. Interlude for you to enjoy. The knights are attacking each other? The sound of the metal ringing against metal fills the air. The knight's swords arch, dive, and stab. Mythros watch. Thrust, yes. <laughs> Watches from behind them, the sly smile never leaving his lips. The two of us can only stand there, stunned into silence. It isn't long before we can see red. That's not a red. It's all copy and pasted. Oh my god, they copy and pasted every single bloodstain. How dare you, you lazy sons of bitches. The smell of blood begins to linger in the air as swords cut through the flesh. Abruptly, I snap to my senses. I attempt to move forward, but mm, Rumple remains firmly grounded. Move! Move, we're in danger, we must go! Dude! Dude! I heard many things about the doctor working at the clinics. I heard that he was a volunteer who had assisted in helping the injured during the Great War. I also heard that, until just recently, he had been cursed. I knew that immediately upon seeing you that you were that volunteer. I suppose it is unavoidable that you and the princess know each other, but to think you would be so close. Rumpel just stares blankly ahead. He looks almost like he's under a spell. His eyes are glazed. Snap the fuck out of it! I continue to call his name. His eyes follow the sword movements of the knights, and he does not, does not even spare me a glance. Well, don't I just feel appreciated? Have I unraveled the doctor? I thought I was already on chapter 10. Oh, no, I was on chapter 9. Last chapter, guys. Rumple, don't listen to him. Ah, just look at all these men you cannot save. All of these men dying before your eyes. He's gonna cry. <laughs> Rumple, we have to get away from here. How many people have you really saved? In the grand scheme of things, you have no talent. That is why you sought help from a witch. Stop that. My thoughts' voice is oddly calm, and I can feel some sort of presence in the air that is different from normal. A knight plunges a sword through another's gut, causing him to lose his sword. The sword skitters, skitters across the floor, gleaming underneath the moonlight. I look desperately at, at, at Rumple and realize that this magic is already working its way into him. He does not see anyone except for Mythros, who is still smiling at him from behind all the knights. I glance at the sword, remembering what... Rumple had taught me. Oh god, don't do it, girl. Don't do it. My thoughts is unguarded right now, but I have better judgment than that. I told Rumple that I was going to steer clear of the burden of taking someone's life. I have a promise to keep. Okay, but! <laughs> but if that person is about to take Rumple's life, wouldn't you kind of want to save him from that? I'm just saying. You know, seeing the big picture. <laughs> You'd kind of want to deal with that. Either deal with my thoughts' death, or deal with Rumple's death. I assume my thoughts will either kill Rumple, or eventually Rumple will kill himself from depression. Either one. <laughs> I gaze up at Rumple and realize that this is the, this is what, this is was how he, this was how. There we go. He looked every time he regained a memory, like he was stuck in his own mind. There's only one thing I can think of to get him out of this trance. I clench my hand in my fist. I'm gonna slap him. Oh my God! <laughs> we punched him. That's worse. I punch Rumple in the face. How badly I've wanted to do that this entire game, and I finally got my chance, and I didn't even get a choice. <laughs> oh. 
Honey, I am so sorry, but I had- did I break your glasses? God, my face! <laughs> yeah, not the face! <laughs> my thrust, not amused. Impossible! Ruppel's eyes clear, and when he looks at me, I can tell he is distraught. Yeah, I punched you one of it. <laughs> but his eyes are seeing the present. Welcome back, bitch. Sorry. Thought I lost you. I suppose I needed that, didn't I? But a slap couldn't have done it. A bonk on the head. You couldn't have kicked me. You had to punch. You had to punch it. Holy shit, that seems a little extensive, doesn't it? <laughs> Rumble smiles sheeplessly. It's fleeting and gone by the time we both turn to my thrust again. I guess her punches couldn't hurt that hard. She's small. You know, he's got a black eye now. He's fucking bleeding from the nose. Missing, missing a tooth. Rumple looks straight past the still fighting knights. If this bothers Rumple, which it must, he hides it beneath a neutral expression. How did you break my spell? You cannot even use magic! Boy, I got the power of my fist. What if you want to feel it? She didn't break it with magic. She broke it with the power of love. It was a love punch. <laughs> I stare at him skeptically. We both know that is not true, and I know Rumple well, well enough to know that he does not mean that. But my thrust looks furious. Love, as if some fairy tale love could save you from this predicament. Princess, you're a witch. You feed, we feed off negativity, off of chaos and loathing. Love serves us no power. Life is about balance. Sexto taught me that. And though I might not be able to uphold a balance of negativities and positives my, myself, I am at least going to try. You could try to do the same, you dip, shit, ass. Hair. Good job, me. You did it real good. You did him real good. You really got him. Maybe look beyond your depressing life and start reaching for something that gives you happiness. Shit, dude. Calm your. Calm down, Rumble. Savage much. Something that won't plummet your. You back into the same darkness. Okay, Rumble. Really. You're roasting him right now. Mithra snaps his fingers and the knights all freeze. They turn to us, swords raised. I do not need to be lectured by some lovesick fool. By all means, cling to your love. I will show you how fragile it is. Witches do not need love. Mithra holds out his hand and the knights begin their steady, deadly march towards us. You know, if it's that slow, I think we can run away. Rumple takes me by the hand and pulls me back. But I see my opening in the narrative. Mythros enjoys inflicting pain with his words. But I can do the same. I've trained my entire life. Let's go. If you do not need love, if you do not need affection, then why are you doing all this for mother? I am not. You are doing this to be recognized. Why? Every student wants to impress their teacher. His words are calm, but there is a desperation in them. Sorry, my foot hurts. I've been sitting on it the entire time. Mother was Mithros's teacher. I thought he was reviving her as another witch, but... Do you know Mithros? Oh my god, my mother was Waltz's teacher! Holy shit! It was a long time ago, we both shared the same teacher. Teacher? Wait. Waltz, are you a... Yeah. Why did- why wouldn't he tell us that? Waltz was mother's student? No, I cannot think about that now. I can use- but I can use this to my advantage. I do not remember mother's students in the least, but one of them turned out right. The other did not, and I can see the bitterness in you. It is the same bitterness I held, only yours goes deeper. You will not sway me with your foolish words. The knights begin to rush us. The run is more of a pathetic shuffle given the harm state that they are in, but this does not slow them down. We're gonna run, but... Trust me, Princess, I'll protect you no matter what. He grabs my hand and we wait. I can see Rumple's eyes darting around as he searches for an opening, like, Why are you waiting? Guys, don't wait. Go. <laughs> I can feel the pulse of his quickened heartbeat through his hand. And I know he's panicking. Who's that? Is that Walt? Suddenly there is a massive luminescent gold wall in front of us. The knights stumble right into it, their swords hitting the bright barrier. Parfait, you're not gonna go you're you're gonna die. Are you too okay? Parfait, you're gonna die. Parfait rushes to stand in front of us. My thoughts expression is cold, angry glare. He measures the situation with a critical eye and then he turns away and begins to dart down the hall. 
Carfake collapses to one knee, arms still outstretched to maintain the barrier. Dolores appears. She's flustered and bleeding in, from one, in, on one arm, but she still stands straight. I'll do that. Dolores holds up her hand and summons fire. Put down the shield, Parfait. I have this. Parfait releases the shield and the magic projectiles shoot out of the out at the knights. Oh dear God! The two edge of the knights back through the hall. The two edge. The two edge the knights. Oh wow! Brain fart. The two edge of knights back through the hallway, but I can see Parfait growing weaker and weaker by the moment. <sighs> Why do you do this? Parfait takes a deep, shuddering breath as she tries to stand. When she falls yet again, Rumpel takes a step forward and looks at her urgently. Lady Parfait, no! I'm fine, don't fuss. I'm gonna slap you, girl. Her breathing is labored, but she still manages to smile. I'm gonna slap you, girl! I fought in the Great War. This is nothing. She looks at me and Rumpel. You two just need to leave. But you're... Fine. I just need to gather my energy. A spell from Dolores sends the knight sprawling to the ground after she creates a heavy downpour of rain that quickly turned to ice. Wow. You two keep going. The entrance is clear. I notice the witches that had been standing behind Mithras approach us now. Dolores stands at, at the ready. I can tell she is hiding a great amount of stress behind her smirk. Parfait slowly gets to her feet. We fight together, Dolora. Aww, besties. There's no one I'd rather have fighting by my side, Fate. Fate? Parfait? Was that really her name? I've been bamboozled the entire time. Come on, princess. We still have an opening. We head around the side. Parfait... It's gonna be still Parfait. Erects a shield to protect us from any magic that comes our way. Dolores summons a whirlwind as a distraction. Ow. My foot is grazed by fire magic, causing me to stumble as I force myself into a limping sprint regardless. This is nothing. At the entrance, I pause in the middle of the room. The main entrance hall is eerily silent. And then I see Mythros edging his way into the king's throne room. He is holding tight to Emmy. Oh no! He notices me watching and smiles. He then disappears into the throne room. Oh, we ain't- oh! We have to follow him. I'm putting my pillow down on the floor. This is- oh! It is on! It is on! I'll punch this fool out! I swear. Give me one second. Okay, I just wanted to restart my recording because it was like 51 minutes and I swear if that recording stopped and got corrupted, I'd throw myself into the fire. We have to follow him. Princess. He has Emmy, you dip nut! Rumpers pu- rump- Rumpers. Rumpel's posture and expression are indecisive, but mine are not. I know Mythros is baiting me, but I cannot leave her alone. <laughs> Sorry. My gaze moves my gaze, yeah, moves around the hallway as I search for other nights. The place is empty, but it's not long before we hear footsteps. I tense at the sound and Rumpel's and Rumpel holds tightly to my hand. Then suddenly as a figure draws near, I recognize him, even if he was something completely different older person. How did you do that? <laughs> you look so weird. How do you do that? He's a waltz. He's big. He's a big boy now. It's like it's like <laughs> it's so weird. I I knew what I'd do is root. He'd eventually be a man. But seeing it now is just fucking weird. <laughs> Go back to being small. I like it better. <laughs> Deeper voice. I finally found you. The fuck are you? You... You broke your curse, but how? Rumpel stares at him in awe. I can't look at him, it's weird! I now dub you Waltz the Big. Oh, This is not the time! There was never a Waltz the Small. You wanna bet? <laughs> I have... I have a bunch of hours of footage to, uh... Fight you on that. Waltz shakes his head. He's so big! He's a big boy! And I broke my curse unexpectedly. I actually found the item I needed while I was searching around. So you need an item for your curse? Oh boy. Is it a fairy? Get it? Because... Never mind. But I can explain more later. For now, we have to go after Mythros. Do you know where he is? He's that way! I point. He's in the throne room. That way! Yeah, that place. Mythros stands in the middle of the empty throne room holding Emmy to him. Emmy though nobody really likes her. 
He has his hands around her neck. Oh, darling, don't cry. Nobody really likes her, and I'm just worried about her. No sudden moves, you three, or this girl dies. Do what I dare you. I can just reload the game, you bitch. And I do know how much death bothers you. With a start, I realize he's talking to Waltz. All three of us are frozen. Wait, he's talking to Waltz? I thought death bothers Rumpel. I mean, I guess death would bother anybody, but still. You bitch. I'm a big boy now. I'll fight you. Traitor. Why can't you see that Hillary wasn't trying to teach us? She was trying to corrupt us. Silence, you traitor. You betrayed her. During the war, you betrayed your own teacher. Our own teacher. Betrayed? Hillary was corrupted. She cannot be saved. How dare you use her name? I mean, it's not really her name, but still. My thrust fingers tighten on Emmy's throat. I can see the tears running down her face. Don't cry, baby. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Her sobbing is quiet, but it still reaches my ears in the silent room. Varg! Come here, boy! <laughs> Varg appears from the darkness. Right. <laughs> As he did before. He, that's, where, that's where he was born from, I mean. He smiles at all of us from behind Mythros's... Mythros, Mythros, God, I can't. Eyes glinting mischievously. You didn't finish the job. You were awfully vague when you told me to take care of them. You know, most people would assume that meant entertaining them and offering them refreshments. Is that what you did? You saw Walt, you, you sat Waltz down to a nice, a nice tea and biscuits. Is that what you did? That's nice. You entertain him with a little ditty. That's, you're the best. Obey me. <laughs> Do it. Far turns to us. He draws a sword used earlier, his smile fading. I think I see something like pain in his eyes, but then I think it might be my imagination. He looks stoic as he moves towards us. When Waltz moves, Mythros's hands tighten over Emmy's neck, and she cries out. Rumpel is watching very everything quietly. The concern in his eyes is muted by the urgency. I follow the gaze around the room, wondering what he is searching for. Hmm. Mythros, is it? You were injured during the Great War. I tended to you once. Stabbed in the stomach. You needed stitches for it. Feel my thrust's confusion before I see it. Just for, for just a few moments, though, his gaze is centered on Rumble. Sorry, every time his name comes up, I have to think about it. His eyes probing him for information. No one came for you. Your teacher must have thought you were too weak that you would die. Well, he's mad now. My thrust's hands fly away from Emmy's neck as he lunges towards Rumple with a snarl, his expression mad. Fight! Fight! The room breaks out in chaos. That was a perfect time to kill him. I mean, it's like, it's three on one. Not counting Emmy, I mean, Emmy's, he's, she's still crying, but it's three on one. I feel the rise of magic beside me. I'm talking too much, I got hiccups. Uh, beside me as Waltz readies a spell, the tension in Rumpel's body as he prepares to shield me. And lastly, I see Varg zip across the room. Oh, I forgot he's still here. Everything goes white. When I look up, I see Walt standing in front of me with a shield. My thrust's hands lie flat against the shield, and I can feel the heat of his magic. <sighs> Thank you, Walt. I love you. Varg lies on the ground beside me, his fallen sword unconscious from the impact of magic. Even Rumple's on his knees. I rush toward the sword. At the same moment, Walt pushes my thrust back into the ground. Then the sword in hand is sent above my thrust and aim at his neck. The blade touches his skin without sinking into it. Emmy is hiding behind the throne, staring out at the scene with a shock in her tear-stained face. Will you kill me? Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. My thrust of smile is mere shadow of itself. You saw the soldiers in the clinic today. You saw how close some of them were to death. Did you see the hollow look in their eyes? I have seen that look many times. It's the look of a man who clings desperately to life. Every life is precious and life is still life. Whether it's vile or not, it's a responsibility you have to bear. I know how valuable lives can are because- Okay, yeah, but think of it this way. <laughs> One life for a thousand lives, okay? If one man was two lanes of friggin', I don't know, of train, would you send the train to a one man who was standing in front of it and couldn't get out of the way, or a bunch of men that were standing in front of it and couldn't get out of the way? Would you save the one or would you save the majority, hello? I mean, imagine if you let Mythros live and he does something bad. 
and kills a bunch of people, wouldn't that be a bigger burden to bear? I'm just saying. Fight me, Rumple. I have a total speech ready for you. You want to fight? The desperation in Mythros' eyes now, a man that clings to life. He's smiling at you. He has no desperation to live. He doesn't think you'll kill him. There is no desperation. He doesn't cling to it. It'd be so easy to slice his throat. I've seen so much bloodshed on this night. It was all caused by Mythros. If I kill him, I can stop it. Now fucking do it! But it would make me no better than... But! But! He's... But! That would make me no better than Mother. I keep saying better. I drop the sword and Mythros actually stops to stare at me in shock. I am not like Mother. I will not kill you for revenge. No sooner I have said the words that I feel a sudden heat at my chest. My hand instinctively reaches up to grab the necklace around my neck. And then there's- That's not a good deed! A good deed will be killing the man who has killed thousands! Oh, why am I the only one seeing this? It, it, am I the only one? Am I the only one actually understanding the logic? Right now, there is no logic! That's not a good deed! I- I am dumbfounded. I am stupefied. I- I don't understand. I- Okay! I need a drink. Oh my god. When that light clears, a new source of light catches my eyes. I just... I, I'm so... Feels like seduce me all over again. All over again. God. Darn it. I stop to stare down at my feet, which are in glass slippers that shine so bright they sparkle even in the dim light. I can't fight these. Give me my flats back. I have no time to admire the shoes or the weight that has fallen off my shoulders. I barely recognize the fairy tale curse has been broken. Emmy rises from behind the throne and screams. Sex, don't get the fuck out of the way! Mythos has grabbed the sword with his hand, turned it around, and is aiming it at my chest. She's so stupid. Ugh. The whole situation is so stupid. It hits a barrier. Parfait stands beside me once more, her face devoided of all of any color. I did not see her rush in here. She takes a step forward as if she to shield me. Wait, God, no, no, don't do it. Out of my way. My thrust draws a sword back and pledges it again at the shield. When did Parfait get here? Oh, Parfait. Okay, I thought it was Emmy for some reason. My thrust draws a sword back and pledges it again this against the shield again at the shield. Someone help me. Somebody read this for me. This time the blade is coated with darkness. It pierces it's the it pierces already flimsy sh the already flimsy shield. I need the power of I need the power of reading. And the blade goes through Parfait's heart. Ah, no! <laughs> I don't like this game anymore. Why does somebody always have to die? Parfait, no. Parfait grabs the blade and narrows her eyes at Mythros. I'm sorry, Hillary did not appreciate you. Something swells inside of me as I stare at Parfait. The sword is impaled in her and I can see her eyes go glassy. No, 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 no. I cannot speak, I cannot breathe. Waltz rushes forward with his magic and pins Mythros forcibly to the ground. He raises his hand, but it never comes down in time. A sword strikes past his shoulder, right at Mythros' neck. Who did that? Who did that? Who did that? When I turn, it is Rumple that is holding it. His body shakes as his tears run down his cheeks. I can't. <laughs> my thrust holds his neck as Rumple holds up the blade and throws it behind him. I have the corner of my eye. I catch movement that can only be Varg, but I don't care. Or fate will not move. We can take the sword out and we can. I see hopelessness in Rumple's expression. I know that whatever ruin Parfait took was lethal. I can see it in his eyes. I can see it in Parfait's. There is no need to fuss. Don't see if I can say that. When Parfait falls, Waltz grabs her and puts his hand to the hilt of the sword. Rumple crumples beside her. He stares at the blood staining the, her dress with sorrow. I start to cry. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Sex, you do not regret this. I am proud of you. The room is quiet, even with the newcomers that arrive. The knights and karma watch the scene from the sidelines, with all the grim looks on their faces. Last to arrive is Dolore, who sits down beside Parfait with her lips pulled in an uptight frown. 
Her face is stern, but I can tell it is a mask. Parfait. That look doesn't suit you, Delora. I told you to stay back. Had I not been here in time, the princess would have. Her words fall apart as she begins to cough. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. This is torture. This is not fun. This isn't fun. YouTube's supposed to be fun. This isn't fun. Dora leans over her and shakes her head. I'm sorry I didn't come sooner. Everything is as it should be, Delora. Parfait cranes her neck to look up at me. Wipe away your tears, Sexto. What you did was a good deed. You spared a man's life. If we had killed him, she would be fine. I'm so mad. I... Killing him would have been... He's... He's dead anyway. He's dead anyway. If I would have killed him, you'd still be fucking alive. I've never felt so emotionally invested in a game in a while, and I am so mad. But life is not a fairy tale. Humans are good and bad. No, it isn't. But the fear of death makes a life even more valuable. Do not worry, princess. I choose. Th I chose this. Parfait smiles. It's mystifying to see her smile when her body is slowly crumpling away and wants his grasp. Fucking game! I'm mad! I'm actually mad! Parfait's body is what gives out first. Her eyes go next. They remain focused on me, still smiling. Her body begins to glow as her body slowly fades away. Oh, I'm so fucking upset! No! No, this isn't right at all. It's an excuse to kill a character off and make you sad. It, oh my god, that wasn't a good deed. That was a fucking bad deed, because look what happened. Because look what fucking happened when he didn't get rid of that when he had the fucking chance. I'm so mad. <laughs> Dolor turns away, and if she is not shedding any tears, it's clear that she is heartbroken. She closes her eyes and releases a shaky sigh. Sweet dreams, my friend. I am so upset. I am so mad. <laughs> to the point where I want... I want to hit something. <laughs> I am so mad. This shouldn't have happened. I don't know how long we all stay in that room. Warning the loss of Parfait. Karma, Julian, and Garland eventually spread out to search for any remaining danger. At some point, they return with the king and the rest of the family. Our union with my family is half-hearted. I will not know what to say to the people I hated only months ago. Despite the quiet, they all take me in with open arms. The king stays by my side long after the others have left. Our men, the knights, return to the march and tell the others the news. Well, let's go search for the search the palace for any remaining resistance. <clears throat> only Dolora, Rumpel, and the king and I remain. Rumpel cries. I've never seen him cry before. He's heartbroken. But his heartbreak is my own. Sorry, I'm coming with my own words. Not I'm. Oh, I've been playing this for a fucking hour, and I am just so mad. I want, I want to call somebody and just rant. And just rant and rant. It seduced me all over again. I am so mad. <laughs> what happened was a nightmare, but it eventually ended. It's not fucking over. I am pissed. Last night, Varg escaped the throne room. No one saw where he disappeared to in all of the chaos. I am beginning to believe that his fate, faint was a trick. Since that night had left, everyone was everyone so tired, we offered rooms in the palace. Came my room with Rumpel, where the two of us attempted to cover each other with words. Mm. Rumpel was especially shaken, being the one to kill Mythros. He was in tears for a long time. He... If we would have killed him, Rumpel wouldn't have to do that. Rumpel's more affected by it than we are. <sighs> fudge. Fudge, 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 fudge. I want some fudge. I am pretty sure that I must have fallen asleep sometime when we were talking, but I'm lying in my bed underneath my covers, and though I think for a few moments that it must have been a finger in my imagination, it is not. Oh! <laughs> so upset. I need a drink. Hold on. He's a very pretty man with those glasses, by the way. 
Let me just, uh... Yeah, let me screenshot that. Thank you. Rumpel is definitely lying right next to me, sleeping beneath those same covers. How the fuck did this happen? I put off the rec the recollection, sorry. The previous day to stare at Rumpel's face. His glasses are off and without them his face is strangely empty. He looks vulnerable, almost like a child, except his face features are too handsome for that. What am I thinking? <laughs> I slowly put my hand to his cheek and flinch when his eyebrows crease. Oh my god, he's so pretty. <laughs> Not that he wasn't pretty with his glasses, just... Look at this. Look at his. I really notice his eyes now and his hair is. I want to touch his hair. Moments later, his eyes open. They are foggy this early in the morning. Have I been awoken by my princess? Usually it's the prince. Prince. Princes. That wake their princesses. I'll always wonder how he manages to keep smiling like this. Even when he is in pain, he forces a smile. But you are no prince, and I am not some damsel in distress. Rumpel closes his eyes again and sighs. There's only one way to break the spell of sleep. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> I flush as his lips curl into a mischievous smile. Still, his eyes do not open. I think about what happened last night. Parfait and Mithras' death. Bog's escape. Everyone else's heartbreak. Before I have to relive the burden, I can afford to lose myself in some happiness. I lean forward to kiss his smile. I break away from Rumpel's... I break from Rumpel, startled. I'm a big boy now. How distressing. <laughs> well, it's the big. Ruins everything. I quickly slip out of bed and Rumpel sits up and puts his glasses with a yawn. Puts on his glasses with a yawn. <laughs> You're so tall. Good morning. <laughs> his eyes widen when he sees Rumpel. Are you so tired that words have abandoned you, Waltz? He's actually taller than Rumpel. That's fucking amazing. No. I just... I wanted to see if the princess was doing okay. We were both all right, actually. He paused to look at us, his eyebrows furled and thought. Though I can imagine just how tongue-tied you must be. You just speak if you have something to say. I think he's more worried than than anything. Well, it sighs. <clears throat> I didn't want to bring this up so soon, but it's been on my mind the whole night. It's just... You didn't have to kill Mithras. That was my job. No. Don't do it again, May. Just, just be quiet. Just let it- just let the anger boil within you and take it out on someone else! That's what you're gonna- yeah! Don't do that, kids. Don't talk about- talk about things. Don't let it boil up inside. Just- I'll take it out on my pillow. I'll scream into my pillow when I go into my room. It's- it's, it's okay. I'm okay. I'm good. Count to ten. Count backwards from ten. Deep breaths in. Deep breaths out. <sighs> okay, that, act, that actually felt some good. That actually felt good. Your job. I doubt that. Besides, I didn't want to kill him. It was. Can we not bring this up? A reaction. The room goes silent for a few moments as Rumple stares down at the floor to move forward. That lives are valuable. Then I. I'm okay. That's why I tried to save my thoughts, but in the end, my sparing his life forced Rumple to carry the burden of his death. And parfait. No, I can't. I cannot rant about this anymore. He had already told me that it was not my fault. Parfait said that what I did was a good deed, but still. Clean my thoughts saved us from more casualties. I hope I can convince Rumple of that. Most likely he'll wrestle with the guilt for a long time. <laughs> Ugh, it's like my nose is crying. <laughs> I turned my attention back to the, vague, the very handsome Waltz. He's a very big man. <laughs> and the questions and... Well, the questions to the back of my mind for the time being. Waltz, well, there are questions I need to ask you. About how he broke his curse, about Mother being his teacher, about Mithras. There's so much to ask and I don't even know where to start. We have plenty of time for explanations now, Princess. After your birthday, Dolor and I will pick up your magic education. But for now, you should rest. I'll give you the full story of my apprenticeship and curse the other day. Another day. Another day meaning your root, Waltz? Gotcha. But Princess Rumpel, I just thought I'd let you know that when Parfait came into this battle, she expected to die. But she didn't fucking have to! She told all of us that while we were sitting around trying to plot a rescue plan. I glance at Rumpel, who nods quietly. Was it because of her fr uh, fra frailty? After the Great War, did Parfait somehow have a feeling? Oh, also, congratulations on breaking your curse, Princess. Didn't have to break it that way. 
Rumpel sits up straight, his eyes narrowed behind his glasses. What was I supposed to? I was supposed to congratulate her first. You had a chance, you didn't fucking take it. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm all stuffed up. <laughs> Rumpel stands and kisses me promptly on not in front of Waltz. He's too young. Wait, never mind. On the cheek. It, it, Waltz looks like he went from Hi ma'am, how are you? And to or Hi sir, how are you to your daughter calls me daddy now. <laughs> he went from that boy to that man. <laughs> Somebody please make a me make a meme of that. Make a meme. Please, that is so funny. <laughs> My cheeks flush, and even Waltz looks embarrassed. Congratulations, my sweet. It was all very dramatic when your curse was broken. There was this bright light, and... Wait. Why was there no bright light when I broke my curse? Because you're not the main character! Both Waltz and I burst out into laughter. Rumpel just sighs dramatically. He leans against my shoulder, and I would not protest. I have a feeling that getting through the memory of last night might be easier with him here. If anyone can put a smile on his face, it's... On my face, it's Rumpel. Hope to see you again at the march and soon, princess. I'll be back. After all, I have friends there. Yep, I said it. Did I speak falsely? No, of course not. It's the truth. Anyway, I need to get going. I've explained what happened to your father, but should talk with him privately soon. After everything that happened last night, speaking to the king is the last thing on my mind. But I suppose I must. Be it must be done. Thank you, Waltz. And you... Rumple might want to ask for a guest room. Oh! oh, oh, oh. But no, bed is comfy as the princess. Damn right, I'm a princess. I nudge him without realizing it, but Rumple just laughs. Waltz is the protective mama. He promised Waltz that we will see him and everybody else in the marching soon. Afterwards, Waltz hurries out and shuts the door. Yeah, you go lock the door. Hurry. My eyes go to the edge of my bed, where something shiny catches my eye. Now oh, my nose. I'm so sorry. Ugh. The glass slippers are a reminder of everything that happened yesterday. But the fact of the fact that life goes beyond just black and white, good and evil are subjective. In the end, life is grey, mother. Both good and bad, but even so, even though fairy tale endings cannot exist, I still want to live my life with everyone else. My thrust centered his life around a single person. He was selfish, now become someone better than him. Thinking about Mythros makes you remember something. Rumpel, yesterday you said that you took care of Mythros during the Great War. That no one came for him, was that true? I don't know, Sexto. He acted like it was tough. It was though, wasn't it? So you never knew Mythros. No, I didn't know him at all. <laughs> so you fucking lied. I don't know if I would have been able to strike him down if I did. I don't know what burden he carried, It was, but it seemed pretty heavy. He only guessed what I could say to distract him. I heard rumors of a strong witch that went abandoned for many years. May have been him, might not have been. So... So, decep so deception exists in everyone. God, that word. Just right out of my head. But it's not entirely what Mother said it was. It's not over. <laughs> I am... Emotionally spent. I am so tired. <laughs> so tired. My birthday's tomorrow. I sit in the throne room speaking to my father who has listened to my tale with patience. When it's over, he looks at me sadly. I owe you an apology, Sexto. This whole time you have been on your own and I could not do anything for you. I can now, starting first by explaining what happened between you and Mother. You knew she was a witch. I did. You did too before she forcefully erased your memories. I tried reaching out to you many times when you were a child, but my efforts were met with resistance. Still, I cannot excuse myself for what I have done. I truly abandoned you, and I am sorry for that, Sexto. I'll explain the story to you if you give me the time. For now, I would very much like to mend my bond with you. To be honest, the king still angers me. He only apologizes now after all has come to light. Whether or not it was difficult to speak to, he still had an obligation to seek me out. He is, he is late to care, but... He's still my father, and I can forgive him. I can learn to trust him again. It'll take time, but I would like to mend our bond. I also like to try, speaking with Emmy and Rod and Ophelia, but that'll take time. The king smiles at me. It is one of the first honest smiles I have seen from him in years. We have time. All the time in the world. We will mend our family bond, I promise. As I turn to leave the room, the king calls out to me. Sexto, I am proud of you. More proud than any other father in the realm could ever be of his child. 
it's not over! <laughs> Whatever happened, we searched for Fritz. Well, after what happened, God. We searched for Fritz, but he has vanished. My Thross Varg said that he had replaced him with Varg. Put the fucking pieces together! But they never said anything about what happened to him. We searched endlessly, but to no avail. All I can do is hope that he is safe, and that I will reunite with him again in the future. Oh, Walt's performance today was amazing, don't you agree, Mr. Rumpel? Please end this. Please end this whole- I'm so mad. I- I'm boiling with anger. I don't want to play anymore. I agree, you ladies are especially charming with so many lilies floating around you. Oh my. Hey, back off, sister. Go date your brother. <laughs> okay, calm down, May. He always speaks like that. I don't mind him. It's been a whole month since the events at the palace. My birthday has come and gone. Now my life begins. I have been practicing with magic with Waltz and Delora, attempting to bond with my family, visiting the margin when time allows me to. Anise was overjoyed to see me visiting often, since Rumpel operates there as a doctor I visit often. Ugh. Mostly though, he clings to me like a fucking leech. Oftentimes I find him in my bed when I could have sworn he was sleeping in another room for the night. Weird. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty odd. <laughs> Sometimes at night he has nightmares. Oh, the poor baby! Of blood on his hands and of Mithras' death. Oh, God. And at those times I'm glad to be sitting right beside him so I can promise him that things are alright. Don't go into a rant. Don't go into a rant. You'll be alright. As for the fairy tale curse, I have no idea how Sexto puts up with you. <laughs> oh, Rod's just as angry as ever. Rod's voice now comes out from between his lips. Now I can actually fucking speak. Since the fairy took us was tied to Mother's still living soul in the crystal, her disappearance and my taking her place immediately caused the root to vanish. I have been working for days to break everyone's fairy tale curse with magic, and when I am done, no one in this kingdom will ever have to suffer from it ever again. Now the Martin is not just a place reserved for the curse, now it's open to the public. Sexto enjoys it, though she finds my poetic weavings to be the best in the kingdom. What he means to say is I can only put up with them because of our relationship. I have no choice. <laughs> Loving someone is so so much can put up with their nonsensical poetry. That was a little passive aggressive. I thought you were the nice one, Princess Emmy. No, she has a point. Emmy fo focuses her attention on musicians standing off in the distance. She points at Sally, then rushes after them, pulling her brother with her. Her guards follow. Ever since the incident at the palace, we have more security. I do not blame the king, though. It can be tiring at times. Luckily, he is more lax with me. When I told him Rumpel was going to be with me, he settled with having Emmy and I share guards. So I get to be alone with She- Rumpel. Did I say Chevy? Oh, often. Father was wary of him at first until he found out he was renowned- he was a renowned doctor. Re yeah, renowned, sorry. Now he has Rumpel to get on- now he and Rumpel get on well enough. Rumpel takes a step closer to me and I place my hands around his arm. <laughs> I am no prince, nor am I knight. Chevalier is literally. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> nor am I a knight in shining armor. I am just a doctor. A doctor who has been blessed with the most beautiful woman in this, in this world. <sighs> deep breath, May. Deep breath, May. Rumple begins to lead me through the town again. He's one of the only constants. He's is the one of the only constants in my ever changing life. He's the one that will always make me smile, and we share our burden, the burden of friends' deaths. Wow. He's more burdened with nightmares than I am, and while I wished I could do more to help, I can at least listen to him, just like he listens to me. No matter the burden, it can be overcome. Come. Next, though. Yo. I love you more than anything in this world. I love you, too. We share one kiss, ignoring the spectators in the town with a shared smile. Then we follow after Emmy. Is it, is it over? Motherfucker! I'm just gonna relax a bit. Enjoy this.
shut the fuck up. Just die. Ugh. I'm sure a spool of gold. Achievements. Guys, oh my gosh, guys, how close are we coming to the end of this game? We only have two more routes to do. Can you believe it? I believe it. I believe it. Anyway, you've heard all my ranting. Sorry, I was playing with a toy at the bottom of my desk. You've heard all my ranting. You know how pissed I am. I hope you all understand how stupid that whole entire scene was. How one person's death could have prevented so many others and the pain of Rumpel and Parfait's death. If she just killed him, Rumpel wouldn't be so distraught. Parfait would probably still be fucking alive. And we would have had the same outcome, but with just tiny differences. I wish there was a choice there because, holy shit, we would have handled it better than Rumple because he's so attached to fucking life. And I said I wouldn't rant. I'm done. I'm done ranting. You all know how I feel, and I hope you all agree with me. I just, I hope, because. <laughs> What I'm saying makes- I hope makes more sense than whatever the fuck just happened. Cause doing that, not a good deed in the long run. In the end, he died anyway. So what does it fucking matter? Anyway. I, I'm done ranting. I'm done. It's been an hour and 35 minutes, I think. It's time to end this. And we're probably gonna do... Waltz next? I don't know. Let me look. So we did Karma, Rumple, Rod. Is Fritz next? You unlock Rumple's and bleh, next story. After completing two character stories, doesn't matter which, you don't have to do both endings. You unlock Fritz and Waltz as playable roots. Ooh, you know what? Yeah, let's do. We'll save Fritz for last because we've barely seen Fritz. So we're going to do Waltz next is what we're going to do. It's going to be fun, you know? Yeah, it's going to be fun. So Waltz is next. And I think that is it. Another bay has been captured. As the saying goes. Oh my god! Fritz's Little Red Riding Hood! <laughs> Ignore me! I just I just got that. I'm so stupid. Anyway, another bay captured. You're gonna go capture another bay in the next episode. Most likely Waltz. Let me know how you felt about this fucking route in the comments. I love you guys. Thank you for sticking around for this entire hour and 35 minutes. I can't believe I've lasted that long. And I've gotten used to my glasses, so yay. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Love you. Thank you. Bye-bye.